You'd think that being stuck at home during quarantine, I'd have all sorts of time to think of a better cold open for my video than this, right? Sorry. And welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Here I am with the latest installment of Tom's A to Z, my monthly series in which I chronicle my alphabetical exploration of House of Records' $1 LP section. Yes, one album by one artist from each letter of the alphabet from A to Z, leaving out one or two possibly because I've been having trouble finding uh, artists to represent some letters of the alphabet. But anyway, uh, yes, two artists and albums per episode. This is the fourth episode, so naturally... Today's uh, video will talk about the letters G and H, and this may be a slightly shorter uh, video than most others because I honestly couldn't find a whole lot to say about either of these artists. The uh, information is either fairly widely known about these artists or was kind of on the short side. But anyway, to uh, stall no longer, let's take a look at the G representation for this year's series. It is an album by Michael Gregory. It's called What to Wear, and you'll notice where is spelled where, not where. Uh, yeah, very clever title. And yes, Michael Gregory is a jazz and R&B artist. Uh, his full name actually is Michael Gregory Jackson. He, uh, of course, decided to, to avoid confusion with the Michael Jackson. He decided to abbreviate his name to Michael Gregory, at least during the 80s. Uh, back in 2013, I think it was, he uh, reestablished his full name as his uh, artist artistic name in public, you know, in the public eye. Uh, this is a very good album. I uh, picked it up as with as is the case with most of these albums, not knowing anything about the artist. I picked this one up, and it's actually very enjoyable. It is mostly jazz, uh, but as typical with the 80s, this one was released in 87, I believe. Yes, 1987. As typical with a lot of jazz from the 80s, uh, it's kind of R&B based, especially when it gets into the vocal side of things. And yes, this album is about, uh, about half the songs are vocal and half the songs are instrumental. Uh, but yeah, just a very good assortment of songs, uh, and I honestly don't have a whole lot to say about uh, the album otherwise. Uh, just yeah, just very, very good songs. Uh, the, the vocal ones are, uh, as I said, kind of uh, R&B, on the R&B side. And yes, Jubilee is the first song, and that was a vocal song. Well, probably the catchiest vocal song on here was called Superstitious Game, and that was on uh, side one. Yes, side one ends with a a sm very short instrumental inter interlude. It's like 20 seconds long, I think. It's called Last Home At. Just a kind of a strange thing, especially to uh, put an interlude in at the end of one side of the album. I just thought it was a little strange, but then it goes by so fast that it's honestly not... Uh, it's over before you know it, basically. But, uh, yeah, I, on I honestly don't have a whole lot else to say about this album. It was very enjoyable. Um, Elon, I think, is how you uh, pronounce the last track on the album is an instrumental that one kind of caught my ear and uh yeah heart of happiness was another one that was pretty good it uh, was i believe that was that was a vocal song yes heart uh, vocal song so yeah um fan the flame was another instrumental that i believe was one that caught my ear and another instrumental was called one so yeah, if you like jazz that's a little bit on the r&b side uh, give michael gregory a try especially this this album what to wear and, and it was kind of fun uh, to play on with that album title. He titled Side A as the What Side, and Side B as the Where Side. Very clever, very... Uh, and uh, so, yeah. Sorry to say, I do not have much else to say about this album. It was good. I'm going to give it a few more spins, I'm sure. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. Just, as I said before, just because I don't have a lot to say about an album doesn't mean I didn't like it. Uh, so, you know, sometimes you like something and you don't know what to say about it. But yeah, it was very enjoyable. I'm glad I picked that out as the G uh, installment for this series. So a very, very enjoyable album. And then on we go to the artist representing the letter H in this year's cycle of Tom's A to Z. Uh, this one is a little bit better known, uh, probably one of the more well-known artists I will be doing in A to Z this year. Although I actually didn't recognize the name when I picked out this album. Uh, it is Roger Hodgson with his debut solo album in the Eye of the Storm. And for the, um, as I said, I didn't know who Roger Hodgson was when I picked up the album. I had to look him up. And he is actually one of the two founding members of 70s pop rock group Supertramp. And Roger Hodgson actually wrote a lot of the uh, better known songs in Supertramp's discography. Dreamer, and It's Raining Again, and Give It a Little Bit, and several of the uh, 
very very well known songs as I said and but uh, if I hadn't known before I listened to this album that Roger Hodgson was the co-founder of Supertramp I would have been able to tell with the music I mean the music is just right on in the Supertramp wheelhouse if you will just great pop rock stuff with a kind of a uh, thin coating of synthesizers uh, and this one was released in 1984 uh, so as I said his his debut solo album a great great album and a lot of the songs on here uh, interestingly enough are very long and the singles that came off this album were uh, of course edited down for radio uh, you know several of these these songs clock in at like seven eight minutes long so that gives it you know a bit of a prog feel to it if only you define prog as having songs that last a long time you know, that that's obviously one of the one of the few uh, earmarks of prog music obviously but yeah just a lot of uh, you know otherwise other than the song lengths this is very much a pop rock album as I said right along with Super Tramp and it's got some great stuff uh, in Jeopardy is probably the catchiest song on the album and which would figure because it was uh, one of the singles maybe possibly the only single off this album I can't remember off the top of my head but uh, yeah just a, a great set of songs here uh, I have a hard time picking favorites on here and, and I'm definitely going to uh, give this one several more spins because it definitely has that 80s uh, synth pop rock type of thing just like Super Tramp does I've said that six or seven times already but yeah a very enjoyable album and a, a great uh, worthy addition to my uh, LP collection I'm glad I picked this one out and uh, kind of speculated on who he was and, and the one thing one of the things that uh, attracted me to this was the cover art as you can see it's kind of an intriguing uh, cover image here the the earth with uh, you know, surrounded by storm clouds and a little bit of uh, lightning hence the title in the eye of the storm <laughs> duh uh, and yeah, an interesting little uh, uh, thing on the back cover too. Yeah. And, and that maybe that kind of uh, connects it a bit more, very very loosely, I will admit, to Prague, in that it has very you know artistic and kind of uh, abstractish album covers, kind of like Prague music, Prague albums do. So, but yeah, uh, very very good album. I'm very glad I picked it up. Uh, both of these actually. So yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot more than that to say about either of these albums, other than that they were good. So I hope you appreciate this uh, shorter uh, installment in Tom's A to Z. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.